my world. Yeah. Picking right. fights with everybody. Yeah, just just pick a fight with the nation of Rongo. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've already um, started espionage. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we are now live on YouTube. I'm going to just do a real quick introduction before we get too far into things. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Jenna. I'm the outreach coordinator at the National Office, and I'm not running this show. So sorry. Alendria, please introduce yourself. <laughs> that's, so, that's totally cool. Thanks, Jenna. I'm Alendria. I'm the editor-in-chief of Sky News Magazine. Um, this is a Sky News Rask event where we are playing... I wish I had like some sort of a megaphone games in space. <laughs> um, and so joining us tonight is Dr. Ben. Um, and again, I'm looking over here because this is where my screen is with all of you wonderful people. And this is the game. Um, ben uh, LaRouche. I'm Ben LaRouche. I'm just a space nerd that's always dreamed about being a professional gamer. So tonight I get to test it out for the first time ever. Um, I'm a mission manager at the Space Flight Laboratory where we build, design, and launch satellites. And basically I get to live out the dream of what it would be like in the way, way, way future and basically get to pilot a whole space colony. Very happy to have Ben here. Happy it is here. wonderful. Okay, so, and so it's an, I don't know. Yeah, sorry, go, go, Alendria, no, you're in charge. <laughs> no, I was going to say we're playing Stellaris tonight. Um, Stellaris, Stellaris, you know, potato, potato. Uh, a game which is available on Windows, Macs, Linux, and it's also available on consoles. Um, it's the kind of game that'll take you hours, maybe even days. Um, don't look at how much time I've spent on this on Steam. Um, <laughs> nor how much time I've spent playing Stardew Valley. Um, uh, this game comes from Paradox Development Studio. Um, I, I think we've all agreed that this is a beautiful game, um, beautifully designed, uh, really easy to, there's a little bit of a curve, like a bit of a jump, but once you get over that jump, that learning, learning jump, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty intuitive. Um, it's a, large game. There's a lot to track. Uh, resource extraction, technological advancements, personnel management, military expansion, colony growth, neighboring empire relations. So you have to kind of decide whether you're going to spy on your neighbors or be their friends or just completely try to decimate them. Um, <laughs> and, you know, all at the same time, you're kind of managing a colony. Um, do you build houses? Do you build mines? It's uh, uh, do you, are you keeping your people happy? The crime rates can go up or down. Um, there's, it's a lot. What did Ben here say? The game scratches a Sid Meier's civilization in space itch that I didn't realize I had. For any civilization fans out there, this is like the whole next level. It's awesome. Yeah. On that note, since I'm the only one with this issue of Sky News available, um, we talked about this in Sky News, Ben and Alendra and I, we, uh, our articles on page 36 of the Jan, nope, July, August issue. July, Hi, August. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we talk about the games that we're going to be playing in this whole series over the month of July um, in this issue. So if you want to take a look at that, um, we're going to give uh, each of those games a little play. I am tapping out of this game. Um, Alendria, for context, Ben and I have been playing this game for a little while now. Mm -hmm. Ben is the Sin Empire at the top of your screen. We recommend doing making this full screen, by the way, because there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, and Alendria will be playing, I've already forgotten, the Glebsig, the Glebsig Empire, yeah. which, which Sounds Ben- Sounds about right. Yeah, there we go, Glebsig Foundation. Um, and you come, as you like move around and send explorer ships, you learn more about the, uh, the nations around you. So. Ben knows more about the Glebsig Foundation than I know about the Tsin Empire because I have not sent any envoys up to Ben. Got a little explorer ship that's been doing its best to explore the entire galaxy. <laughs> Called the Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get killed someday. <laughs> oh, totally. It almost has a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a note here from David from Halifax. Um, owns the game but hasn't gotten into it yet. Yeah, it's it'll take a little bit to get into. It's uh, it is a steep learning curve. Yeah, 
It is. The, the first hour I played of this game, I just kept going into systems and essentially going, ooh, this is really pretty. <laughs> and that was more than enough to keep me hooked. <laughs> this, this is so cool. This is a black hole that Ben found. Yeah, called the Demon's Maw. So cool. Now, okay, so I have as the really <laughs> annoying, what is it, pedant? Um, being pedantic. Yeah. I am being pedantic when I say that this is not technically scientifically accurate, but it's still really cool. Like there's no mirror, you know, in a, if you have a black hole, the, the light from whatever is behind it is what wraps around the black hole part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not what's happening here, but you get the idea. It kind of looks accurate. It does look really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so neat to be able to see cool things, like to explore space without leaving your chair. <laughs> and so many of the systems are like unique and they have all different resources and different setups and they're just, yeah, it's just neat to just explore. Yeah. And I think uh, David again here mentions that uh, steep learning curve, typical of paradox games. Yeah. Like I, what was it? Crusader Kings two is a paradox game. Um, and so yeah, Crusader Kings is yeah, very, very steep learning curve, very complex. Um, I didn't play it. I saw, um, somebody else, uh, one of my buddies plays it all the time and uh, used to, like, I watch and I'd be like, too much, too much. <laughs> um, but this is in space and therefore it's far more appealing to me than <laughs> it's true. And yeah. Emma, Emma commented saying that uh, her knowledge of space games is pretty, pretty low. And I will, as, as a second child, I will note, so this game is really, really cool. But I tell you, I love watching other people play games. <laughs> <laughs> Because my brother never let me play. Um, and so there's, <laughs> there is a certain amount of joy in, um, in watching other people play. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping to tap into tonight. Yeah. Did he give you the unplugged second controller? He didn't. He was never that evil. <laughs> he, was, he was always honest with me. <laughs> I'm the youngest of three. I got the unplugged controller all oh. the time in two player games. <laughs> oh. That's so sad. <laughs> that was fine. I didn't know better. I was the oldest and I tried to let them play as much as I would. I don't know. I just a good I like person. being the good one at the game. Um, but I also liked to teach them and show them, which was probably just as annoying now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> and James here asks, how many players can play this at the same time? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I think, I think a lot. Number. Yeah. So I mean, right now we've got about like, what, 12 empires going? Yeah. So you can, when you load up a game, um, you can choose to be whichever empire is there. Also, if you guys want to hit, hit like unpause so you can get time yeah. going forward and Alendria, you can get your oh, spies no. onto. Um, <laughs> the, oh, spies are already set and ready to go. They're off then. <laughs> there they go. Oh God. Um, so yeah, so you can, you can like set up a server and have a bunch of people maybe up to, I would say up to about 15 play at once because there are so many different, um, different empires um, and everyone can have different strategies. So for example, at the moment, ooh, are you gonna go attack things, Ben? Uh, I'm gonna go attack those mining drones. Oh, so you can have different strategies. Like some people are super peaceful. Some people are super religious. <laughs> some people are Ben. <laughs> some people- I accidentally are... am playing a- race of slavers apparently which i didn't realize when i chose this particular race but oops yeah. oops yeah. an oopsie yeah i'm just gonna the... lean into it <laughs> do you oh did i find your empire capital that's what i was looking for i couldn't find it so each empire also has a capital and the capital is the city that the planet with the city it all starts off and that's like kind of where you start um and the capital has all the things that I'm looking for, like the military base, um, uh, the central hub for trade. And uh, yeah, so I found, I was going to just about to ask Jenna where her central hub was, but I found it. That's good because I only know physically where things are and I have no idea what anything is called. Um, oh, joy. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the thing, so the thing I really like about this as that person who's always like, is it scientifically accurate? Um, <laughs> is that there's, they, you can see the stars are not entirely two dimensional if you shift the map around. Um, you can look at, uh, they are like at different heights and stuff like that, which I really appreciate. Galaxies are generally flat, but they are 
they are sort of like on different, slightly different planes, which is really cool. Um, and there's so many different star systems. There's like, there's some with one or two planets and some with 12 or some with three stars and planets around each one. It's just so cool. And the ever popular space whales. <gasps> space whales. That part may not be, may not be scientifically accurate. I can't say it won't be. <laughs> we you saw know. her from the nation of Rongo. No, what, really? Oh no, someone else made. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that you, Alendria? No. Rongos are the bullies in this game that we're playing. They have declared war on every single person and they're right up against the, the people that Alendria are playing and they keep stealing our cities. They're like, this one's ours, even though you have a star base on it, but it's ours now. They're not very nice as far as I can tell. They've, I think they've declared war with almost every single other civilization that, uh, that is in the game. Let's see. Oh, a new black but hole? They are superior. Yeah, a new black hole. So there's a, there's a screen. It's, you go to contacts and it tells you where everybody is in terms of uh, kind of gameplay. Oh, yeah. Right you have the now. superior power. Oh. Compared to ours, too. Yeah, so Rongo is dangerous. And Ben, you've got, a, you've got a science ship in orbit around that black hole? I do, and they just discovered an anomaly. So situation Ooh. log. Yeah, why do they hate the Glebsig Foundation so much? I don't know. It's because we're right next door. We're easy to hate. A rainbow in the dark. Sensors pick up unusual readings in the vicinity of the Geltori black hole. Readings that are hard to explain being this close to a black hole. Let's investigate yeah. that. This is, there's so much to think about in this game. I love that you can choose what, what anomalies to investigate. Yeah. And so right now, um, Jenna's uh, scientist has finished some of their research. And so now I have to choose which path is the next one that they go on? Do I? Um, what are your options? Deep crust engineering, which will Ooh. unlock uh, tile blockers um, for, uh, for I guess what looks to be like active volcanoes. So if you do deep crust engineering, you can get rid of active volcanoes and then you can build more things on your planets. Okay. Uh, stellar expansion, which increases your star base capacity by two. Vitality boosters, which increases leader lifespans by 10 years. Subdermal stimulation, which Ooh. unlocks the feature chemical bliss. <laughs> Is that like ah! a massage chair? <laughs> 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 How do you feel, Jenna? Chemical bliss, leader lifespan, starbase capacity, or? I do like the idea of chemical destruction. I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn between chemical bliss and starbase expansion because I build a lot of star bases. Um, chemical bliss increases the living standard. Let's do chemical bliss. Sounds nice. <laughs> All right. Research chosen. But it, why won't it let me actually click it? It's a rare tech. Oh, there it goes. Now it starts. Okay. So what you're looking at when you're looking at Ben's screen here is on the right hand side is a list of like, oh, um, is a list of most of the stuff that he has going on in his system. So you've got four different colonies on different planets around one star and another one around a different star, correct? Uh, I think these are actually all in different sectors. These are just my established ones and this is the new one that I'm colonizing right now. Okay. Yeah. Also a question, because, and I also am not very great at answering this because I can't remember which one we downloaded. From Kareem, is this the regular edition or the Galaxy edition or another one? I feel like it's the regular. I think it's just the regular. Yeah. Yeah, this is regular. Okay. There are ones where you can get humanoids, which is cool. Whoa. Uh, it's, there's, there's a million different, no, that's not completely accurate, but close enough. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of different like expansion packs. Um, Ben, what kind of species are you? What kind of animal? I am the uh, lizard-looking reptilian. 
Who likes Desert Prefer Wars? Prefer Desert World. I'm quarrelsome. I'm decadent. Uh, resilient. Strong. Basically, I'm a, I'm a fighting and expansion kind of race. Cool. Alondria, what are you? Uh, some sort of floating jellyfish. <laughs> I think uh, I'm a mollusk in that one. Yes, you mollusk. said you were a, what was it? A peaceful mollusk? A peaceful mollusk. Yeah. You're the glyps- yeah, you're yeah. a floating <laughs> tentacle mollusk. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell us in the chat what you would be if you could be any of these types of creatures. There are, there's cr- mollusks. Ooh. I don't know what this what guy is. is. Looks like a starfish with a body. <laughs> be creative, everybody. <laughs> This is a bird, the floating There's mollusk. Mammalian ones. Thanks. I swear I've seen this guy in Star Wars. <laughs> That's kind of shark head. He looks like a slug. Yeah, this is <laughs> these, it's the Rongo people are the slugs, of course. The worst. Mm-hmm. Ooh, like six eyeballs. Oh, man. I'm assuming. <laughs> Their depth sure. perception must be amazing. <laughs> So many options. And this is just a small snapshot. (laughs) If I could be a peaceful mollusk, I would be a peaceful mollusk. (laughs) And I really like the way the games kind of like set up the, how to overcome the vast distances um, in space. Because when you're currently traveling a system, your ships actually travel pretty slow. So this is like the speed, but there are these um, highways, I guess. Um, that link the stars and that's why you'll see that when you exit a system your ship kind of goes pretty fast to the next system because otherwise if you had to travel at the same speed it would take forever to get anywhere and it it does still give that bit of reality that is like okay so you want to send your science ship all the way across the galaxy it's going to take a couple hours And the, the mechanics is basically, um, at the start, you have two ships. You have science ships and construction ships. And your science ships are the ones that do all the surveying. So that's what I just sent this ship out here to the next unexplored system. Um, oh, where is he? Oh, he's up here. There he goes. Oh, so, yeah. So this ship is going to go to this um, unknown highway linking to the next system. And then I'm going to be able to see what's in this system. But because I haven't explored it yet, I can't select it or zoom in or see what's in it. And once you've surveyed a system, then you can decide whether you want to colonize it or um, just put in some essentially farming uh, autonomous systems. So we have a station and we have resource gathering stations, like a mining station for this one. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. Jenna, I'm going to adopt the new tradition. Ooh. What, what tradition are you going to adopt? I'm going to adopt faith in science. Okay. <laughs> and that will give, a, give us five out of five for discovery. Ooh. So another part of this game is that there are traditions that you can adopt. Um, expansion, domination, prosperity, harmony, supremacy, diplomacy, and discovery. And Jenna has got five out of five for diplomacy and four to five for discovery and none of the rest. Uh, and every time you get, uh, when you finish one of these traditions, you get what's called an Ascension perk, um, special bonuses that uh, the Empire can unlock by completing a tradition tree. Um, and so the last one was technological ascendancy is what Jenna got. Uh, so it means that research speed increased by 10%. It's, these are very valuable things to have. They give you a kind of leg up on the competition. So I'm adopting that tradition. Thank you, Alendria. No problem. Mm-hmm. But now you can tell me which Ascension perk you'd like. Ooh. Okay. Can you go through them? Actually, not just choose whatever you'd like. I wanted to mention, because Cicely, I'm behind. Cicely's joining us on YouTube and <laughs> mentioned that, Ben, you said that you're decadent. And is that referring to your personal taste or to your flavor? My choice of chocolate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just discovered a wormhole. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, this is completely new to me. I have no idea what to do with the wormhole other than <laughs> obviously try to send a ship through it. Yeah, but you need wormhole stabilization. That sounds yeah. like something somebody afraid would say. <laughs> that coward's move. <laughs> and any ship. And Jenna, just so you know, I went with Mastery of Nature. Yay, that sounds great. Good. eventually give you uh, terraforming. Yes, please. And it also nice. means that you can clear blockers. Oh, good. Uh, Yay. Much more easily. That's, that's a super neat feature that I only found out about the last time we played, which is that um, when you build an, or when you colonize a world or you build, um, you expand your city, uh, depending on what planet you're on, there will be things in the way. Um, and so, for example, there might be volcanoes or there might be toxic swamps or there might be any number of things and so um we if you look at what ben has on screen right now don't close it yet ben um there's like little little hashed out boxes under each of the districts up a little bit Ben. it's those ones and so that means that there are areas that are blocked off um that you can clear out by doing stuff like i don't remember what the button is to do that features i think to the right of the of the district spot features yeah so oh, there's yeah, like a there quicksand basin impassable mountains that you can just destroy to make way for not people <laughs> okay james has a really good question here um doesn't understand about how this game does not get overwhelmingly complicated when you have a growing <laughs> empire with more and more ships planets and encounters how does the game allow that complexity to remain manageable, but fun? Uh, well, you can, put, you can put it on autopilot, part of can. it. Yeah. And another thing is that like, so what I do, I have like just little tricks, right? And so one of the things is like, I came into Jenna's game and renamed all her construction ships. Um, and so now Jenna's ships are named Ranger F1, <laughs> F1 Nifty. F1 Nifty, oh, come on. <laughs> And then all the science ships are like named after scientists. Um, I find those little things a little bit easier because then it's like, I see the scientist's name and then I know that that's what it is. Um, in my own personal game, I named all my military ships after uh, clusters. So there's like the Pleiades, the Hercules globular and a couple of other clusters in there too. And so all my fleets, um, it, it's like, it's just easier for me. I'm like remembering that the Pleiades are in like a certain location and, you know, and I keep the Hercules and butterfly together. Um, and so it's those kinds of things sort of help. Um, the game also has a really good kind of heads up menu, which you see on the right here. Like that's what we yeah. started going through with uh, Jenna, where you see all your home world and you can see progress when things are going. So when I hover, you can see that, oh, I'm clearing quicksand on this planet. It's about 12% complete. And if I scroll down, you can see what your shipyards are doing, what your star base is, your military fleets, if they're orbiting or going someplace, and then where your construction, your civilian ships. So my construction ships have one that's just orbiting around a Bernie star, um, mm -hmm. one that's doing nothing, just sleeping, and all my science ships are busy, which is what I keep checking on here. And if you want to go to anywhere and see what they're doing, you can just double click and it brings you right to your ship. And then you can see what that guy was particularly doing at that moment. And you'll see once in a while, there'll be little um, drop down menu items up here. And they'll tell you when any events are occurring. The color coding helps a lot. It um, does. Because they do things like if you look at the top of Ben's, Ben's very like top of the screen, you can see that everything's mostly going okay, except food is not, it's not in a deficit, but it's not, he's not gaining food either. Um, and that his sprawl is a little off. Um, he's getting out like moving too out eager. Too eager. yeah <laughs> um but i i also um james get overwhelmed by this a little bit it starts to after a really long time playing it it starts to feel like chaos <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to keep like just put out fires and keep track of things it depends on how your system is going to like i get unbelievably stressed about rongo trying to take over my stars it's like, <laughs> nothing's actually happening <laughs> they're not actually taking them over and even if they did it's not the end of the world but it just raises my blood pressure <laughs> <laughs> is that a sign of a good game you think 
Yeah. It's like, it's like the excitement blood pressure maybe or something. I don't know. <laughs> the game requires that you take medication. I'm sure it's bad. That's a good quality. <laughs> it means you care. It means you care. We're invested. <laughs> I mean, by the looks of it, in what I, I see here of Jenna's world, it's like you're pretty solid in terms of like you're maximizing all your potential. Um, like it took me a little while to go through it all here, um, but your empire sprawl is like it pretty much topped out. All of your colonies have as many buildings as they possibly can. Um, no crime and everybody's happy. Like this is, you know, your, your, your empire is uh, a top notch ship shape. I am, I am a perfectionist both in work and personal life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. I'll watch could, the factions fight with amongst themselves, maybe. You could build more ships and go and attack Rongo if you wanted to, but I'm not sure we're <laughs> at that point. I might go to the shipyard and just build, because your, your military is lacking. The Crest of Waves only has two out of 30 ships, and the ocean only has five. But keep an eye on the naval at the top. There's like a how much navy you can support. Um, yeah. I disbanded some of my navy because it was over the top. Ooh, yeah, you were twenty. Oh, so that means I can build. That's what I can do. I can build you some some space for them, naval yeah. capabilities. Yeah. How? What does how? Goes to show you how good I am at this game. Well, how do you do that? What is it? What how? What lets you be have more fleet? You increase the level of your because your star bases. So you um, start at like very basic star bases, and then you can kind of level up uh so right now your star base here is a star hold so i'm going to upgrade that and then you should be able to do more cool and what you can do is once you upgrade you can start adding modules to your star bases and it's what you want is uh naval uh what is it it's called like naval naval capabilities um i just I think my game is running a little bit slowly. Um, and so I when I click on something to do much. something, yeah. When I click on something to do something, the things don't always show up right away. But yeah, because you have a ton of alloy and the alloys are like when I'm building up my military, that's where, and so alloys, if you look at Ben's screen, top center, he's got like 2.5, thousand yeah yeah alloys and jenna's got four thousand right now Ooh, flush and, with alloys yeah so in my other game for instance i have very little alloy uh because i beefed up my military and got rid of the crystallings um, ben what's that and some i have no idea they're called a corvette murder of uria so i'm assuming they're friendly they sound friendly <laughs> Murder of crows. Yeah, what could go wrong? And purple's a typically friendly color, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely doesn't represent <laughs> any. Uh, no poisons any... I know of that are. This purple. one's called an assault flock, which sounds even better. <laughs> Doombringer class. I wow. think I'm going to steer clear of those guys for a bit. Sounding um, hopeful. What did I find about this black hole down the drain? The readings originate from a small metal pod. Science officer Hask Virik has determined it to be a lifeboat of ancient and alien make. Ooh. Evidently caught on the outskirts of the black hole's gravity well eons ago. And this is the problem of the game is as I'm reading, there's other things happening in the background still. Uh. <laughs> An angle just short of a slingshot maneuver, whether this was the intent or happenstance is difficult to judge. Pod's automated thrusters have been fighting its descent to the event horizon ever since. It is now too close to the horizon to salvage. Oh. oh. Oh no! Wait. Ask Virik's report ends abruptly, and the crew of the 11S Alum and Upearl communicate that the science officer appears shaken and deeply troubled by the tragic fate of the lifeboat. Oh no! Oh. They do only give you like one option to respond to things a lot of the time. Yeah, it's yeah. understandable. <laughs> yep. Yep. Say love you. An acknowledgement. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's an unbelievable amount of lore that you can get into in terms of like, if you're paying attention. Yeah, I, I was trying to track um, 
the shrines to the old gods. Was that the one I was going through? Yeah, so there's a series of um, exploration quests that you can go through when you find these massive statues. But I think a bunch of them are outside of my system and I can't go mm -hmm. track them. Oh yeah, oh, this yeah, one right here. That's in. Yeah. It, these guys block me out of their system, even Rude. for exploration, so. Rude, actually super yeah. fun fact, some of these species or popul individual populations are xenophobic. Um, and so you'll have groups of, of space creatures that will not like other species of space creatures. Um, and that those personality traits play a part when you send individuals to do stuff. So like you wouldn't want to send xenophobic, whatever your species is to go and meet other species. This is one of my favorite parts of the game. Um, I'm about to have a start battle. Oh. Are you fighting the drones? Yeah. So these are abandoned mining drones or ancient mining drones. Oh, oh look at that. Wow. So the only thing I know for the star battles is that they give you a relative military power. As long as yours is pretty much higher than the other guys, you tend to win, but I don't know if it's always the case. I don't know how much of this is a uh, roll of the dice. Do you have to go repair your ships afterwards too? Yeah, you have to replenish your fleet and repair your ships. This is so pretty. Yeah, they've done a really good job with the graphics. Do you get to control the battle at all or is it automated once you set it up? It's just all automated. But it's yeah, automated. It, it's, it's automated, um, but you go in with your numbers, right? Yep. Um, and like you mentioned, it's like your different, your different uh, military, like your science ships or folks that are going like uh, your military commanders have the different level, like different things that they can do. And so like, for instance, in my other game, I have a military commander that runs away. Um, where the battle gets <laughs> a little bit hard. <laughs> so, is that a, is that a feature or a bug? <laughs> a little bit of both. Cause I mean, if he, if it looks any kind of scary, he's just like, Nope. Um, which is sometimes when you're exploring, you accidentally run into things. Um, and so you may not necessarily want to engage in battle. Um, and so he would often run into things and then be like, no, 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 no. Whereas my other military, I have other military commanders that are um, staunch and will battle to the end, but then they might take my really good um, uh, fleet into an impossible battle and then kill them all. Uh, so, so, so Mr. So, Runaway can be a benefit. <laughs> that's fair. We have a question from David, which is presumably better tech will give you an advantage even if outnumbered. And I think yes. that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, relative military power takes that into account. Right. Yeah. That's that I little so. number under yeah. each of the military fleets off to the right. So this one is, uh, oh, yours has gone down. Yeah. Mine is 350 and theirs is 204. And yeah. This little slider is not going green as much as I want it to. Yeah. And so you also have the ability to build your own ships. I don't know if we've mentioned that yet. I got really into trying to figure out your game here. So when you build your own ships, like you can design what kinds of engines they have and that'll affect the speed. You can change what kinds of shielding they have. Um, so for instance, while I was fighting against um, these mean old crystallings, um, I was using their technology against them. Um, but that wasn't necessarily the best thing to use against the ancient mining drones that were really angry and just set up and had like 10,000 firepower, but the crystalline shielding technology didn't really work that well against them. So you can change your, the way that you build your ships based on who you're fighting against. There's so much involved. This is, it's a, it's a big brain activity. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it involves a lot of mental energy. Yeah. 
we we have an array of video games that we're playing so this is the first one uh, we but we all really like this one and we mm -hmm. do find that we have the en mental energy to to like play it mm -hmm. um, but we have some lighter ones coming up as well mm -hmm. this one might be the most complex one we play yeah although this so, one in elite dangerous yeah so we're playing elite dangerous which is um kareem to your point you get to control battles more like you were driving the ship in a battle um in elite dangerous should you choose to battle um but it's it's complex but you can choose to like bite a small chunk out of it whereas with this one there's very little option to bite a small chunk out you're pretty much like diving headlong into um a very complex system um, whereas with Elite Dangerous, you can kind of just like be a space trucker if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy a Winnebago. Yeah, you can buy a Winnebago and go explore the universe. You can literally play as a UPS delivery guy, and it's an awesome part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that one will be playing third. So that's in two weeks from now. Uh oh, my know. intel on Rongo's falling. Oh no, oh, no. more spies. Let's try to improve relations. Oh no, don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> They'll continue building a spy network in Rongo. Odd now, she is 75 and she's building a spy network. And I just imagine her as, you know, 75 years old being very good at being a spy in the area. I think 75 um, is pretty sprightly for a mollusk. You're right. <laughs> These are, okay, we're gonna, who are we gonna put in charge of our, we've got Wittig and Shoulders. Shoulders is 70s. What, Wittig? I'm going to like a, <laughs> yeah. gonna go and improve relations. Sounds Yay. like a winning name. Yeah, yeah, it's a Wittig name. <laughs> yeah, Wittig. It's funny. <laughs> Big fan of bad jokes. <laughs> you are good at them. <laughs> One of our envoys is now building a spy network. Um, the spy network will start to decline if no envoy is assigned to it or if its existence is exposed through covert operations. What is going, is this still the same battle? Yeah, I was going to say, considering it like the speed of which like days pass, like a day is a few seconds here. This battle has been going on for like two weeks. This is a long battle. Yeah. But did you notice those watching that the, um, Spaceships are traveling the proper tra trajectory when they're fighting, which is nice. None of them mm -hmm. stop and turn around. They have to like do big sweeping turns. Did you know you started a rivalry with Rongo? They started it. I did nothing. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> well, Your I have the option to end it. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but no, 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 no. Don't end it because we, we entered into it. I'm pretty sure we entered into it because um, a bunch of our allies are also in a rivalry with Oh, them. I see. And I'll I, just we would lose all our there. allies. Okay. Yeah. I think. Okay, it's very... A, go ahead. A very geological structure at Sismac 4 is indeed in flux, driven by what science officer Melungord assures us as a tectonic process, oh, as wow. fascinating as it is esoteric. Um we may be able to strategically halt the planet's ceaseless chaotic self-transformation. In short, a near instant stabilization of the planet into something slightly, if not entirely, more habitable. Hmm. It's theoretically possible. Um, I the found it. Will ha and it'll cost 200 energy credits. I'm going to give them those credits. Yeah, yeah do it. The I curie will something. have its 200 credits. What are credits for if not to spend? That's exactly. true, yeah. You have lots there, Ben. And a new ruler was elected. Okay, sweet. And I was, I was going to mention that I found out recently that Venus does that, that Venus like has a hot core, but no tectonic action. So it, every 600 million years, it just kind of goes and redoes its whole surface. What, what does it do? <laughs> it's very descriptive, Ben. I don't know why you need to hear that you twice. Bit, you are I don't know how I missed it the first time. <laughs> Um, we have a question from James, which is, what do you find most rewarding, the most rewarding part of playing the game is? Oof. 
I feel exhausted when I'm done playing the game. <laughs> Sometimes it's just surviving it. <laughs> um, I actually get a kick out of like a resource management game. So I actually really enjoy seeing when you start with like basically one planet, one ship, and then you just slowly grow, explore, and then like manage like an entire empire. It's, I enjoy that. I enjoy that feeling of like troubleshooting problems and discovering new things and making decisions for that. It's very much a Sid Meier's game. That's, I always loved all the Sid games, so. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrea, what about you? What do you find satisfying? I don't know. <laughs> this is what happens when you play this game for a while is you're just like, I'm busy. Give me a second. I'm reading. I don't know where the thing is. Um, it said that we could terraform a world and then I oh, pressed excellent and it disappeared. Oh no. So I hope that by clicking excellent, they're working on the terraforming. No, it's just a notification. You might have to check the situation log or something like that. Situation log has nothing. Well, it was, they did research. And then they finished the research and said okay. that they could do the terraforming. Yeah, so, but there's a small window of options. Um, oh, Grimacing Planet. Yeah, here we go. Got it. Ben, I have a question for you. Yes. Because you do a very, I don't want to say it's a light version of this in real life, but we're not at the stage where we're colonizing other worlds. So you I just run a small empire, you know, on the side, <laughs> Monday to Friday, not during holidays though. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You got to have those long weekends. Man. <laughs> um, if you could, if you could I pause the game, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Cause I can't yeah. figure out how to make the grimacing planet not grimace. Okay. So this is another pause. feature that we haven't talked about is when you get overwhelmed, you can always pause this game. That's it's true. Really, really pause. helpful. Yeah, you can just stop all actions, set up a bunch of things to get ready and then send them off by hitting play. Um, ben, if you could, so Ben builds satellites that tend to orbit around Earth. If you could build a satellite that would go and orbit around another planet, would you and where would you send it? Oh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. I mean, they're all interesting for different reasons. Um, NASA's done an awesome job of exploring our solar system, but I mean, missions take sometimes decades to get the planets. They cost a crazy amount of money. Um, and so we only get a couple missions, um, you know, every decade sometimes. Like for the, like Pluto, when we got to get there, we didn't think we were gonna find much. We just sent a really cool mission, just to see what we could gather in terms of information. And we discovered, a whole bunch of information that we had no idea existed, including like the pictures of like the surface and the textures and the colors. So like, it's all cool. I definitely want to go check out Venus. And I don't have a particular reason that I love Venus so much. I just think it's a really neat planet. Um, I think, you know, the fact that we landed something on the surface, well, the Russian uh, landed something on the surface of Venus that lasted, you know, hours because it was so corrosive, so horrible to be there, but we still kind of made it. It just makes me want to go check out again and see what we could do now like as the next step that'd be very cool venus is a cool planet it is like they're all cool <laughs> they all have their own little thing like even so, the moon is fantastic like so ben's gonna run the solar system this one <laughs> we'll send yeah, other people to run other ones that's right <laughs> i'll be in charge of this yeah <laughs> might be some slight slavery if i pick up from this game <laughs> i mean no it's a horrible idea <laughs> just by default oops <laughs> Listen, i didn't know what i was agreeing to <laughs> <laughs> you signed without reading the terms and conditions <laughs> i was like lizard people are cool that's the worst that could happen <laughs> oh man and kareem made a point earlier about um the fact that not having them all be humanoids is good and i think we would run into a lot of like ethically questionable things if they were all humanoids it makes it a lot easier to keep this separate when you see them as like lizard mollusk people <laughs> i'm gonna press play again is that okay go for it we're back on oh my gosh yeah so like i didn't even know that this tab in policies existed until today Whoa. <laughs> um yeah and i've played this game a lot but it basically kind of like summarizes your species and what they believe and this is where i found out that yeah slavery was allowed oops yeah but we welcome refugees so we're like that's nice yeah welcome refugees but in 
into not a very good life, possibly. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. You can't. We have open borders, but. <laughs> but. Join also- us. I think you can I think you can change or you can um, control citizenship of different species and stuff like that in your oh. Um, that, oh. empire. Yeah, I can't prohibit slavery. Oh, no. What did you do? Oh, you have to have I have to get rid of my slaver's guilt. Oh, that's what you have to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like the first step. <laughs> oh, and a question a question from um, James and also Cream I think is leaving now. Have fun. Bye, Kareem. And Thanks, possibly Kareem. Urias as well. Bye, Kareem. Um, uh, and James had a question. Do you play the game differently uh, the same way each time, or do you try a different species' personalities to see how it goes? Different every time. <laughs> I have five or six different games, all with completely different strategies, different species. Everything's different. I just want to see what the game has to offer. I just want to go check it out. Yeah. I also play different, uh, um, and I, I think this playing Jenna's world is quite uh, quite interesting. I haven't played the mollusks yet. <laughs> um, I think I was the duck people once, and then I was the jellyfish another time. Um, my duck people, I think, are very much, they're like commerce oriented. So sort of, I imagine they're kind of like the Ferengi from Star Trek. Um, <laughs> And my jellyfish people, I mentioned this earlier to Jenna and Ben, that they're, um, uh, they're really long living and they're also commerce oriented, but they're super peaceful. Like they're, they're impossibly peaceful. Like I've got factions that are, you know, we're not peaceful enough and we're the most peaceful things in the galaxy. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really fun. Um, one thing I haven't been able to do, and maybe Ben can talk to this a little more, is so I managed to make a civilization, my vassals, um, and they've actually joined us. Uh, so we have two different um, races, uh, two different nations that have become one. Um, I haven't been able to, um, because I think they have to be one of our vassals for like a hundred years or something before we can do this, but we can populate planets with their people. Um, and so you can I have like gone to that. <laughs> race planets. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been kind of working on that so that I could have like my super peaceful people. We managed to put down our equivalent to the Rongos uh, pretty quickly, the, the battle ones. Um, and so, yeah, now we have like a very peaceful galaxy in this other game that I'm playing. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to colonize planets with other species. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't I'm- made it to that stage in any of my games. Maybe it's because I keep starting new games to see what happens <laughs> differently. <laughs> And that's that's the sort of nice thing to to um, to James to your point about this being overwhelming is that you can kind of do as much as you want, um, like the fact that you know you didn't Ben you didn't know that the policies tab was there until today, it probably affects something. But it uh, if you don't play with it and you don't know what it affects, and so it's okay. You can just kind of keep checking along, um, and so you can kind of like move at the speed that you want to move at. Also, just a heads up, guys, we have 10 minutes left before our hour is up. This is one of the things about this game. The time just absolutely flies by. Yeah. It really does. I've been waiting to go colonize the Bernie worlds. Yeah. They're waiting and ready. There's one that's... I don't don't have enough influence. Oh. No. Wow. It really does move slowly for you, eh? Yeah. I mean, we can... Make, and so this is another thing with this game is that you can speed it up. Uh, so it's easy. Like if you want to do that kind of thing, it's easier. I think if you're by yourself and then you can speed it up, slow it down, pause it and do all sorts of stuff. Whereas if you've got multiple people, um, like for instance, I'm waiting for my science ship to move and I'm not doing anything. I'm just staring at it. Um, so I could speed up uh, like I'm like in the system right now, just kind of watching this thing slowly move across. It's like, watching a raccoon walk across your backyard Um, but yeah so if you wanted to speed it up you could 
but it's very quickly going to be in another system. And then I would generally pause it when it got there. See, but I find this interesting, Ben, that yours is moving, like mine moves faster than yours at a normal speed. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what the difference is. It might be my species. Maybe, yeah, it might be your species. It might be, I don't even know. Ooh, or it might be a a multiplayer game. Oh, maybe. Oh, and I can build the new ships. I got destroyers too. That was the thing I was about to do, but then the battle started and I got distracted. Did you win that battle, by the way? Or are you still fighting? Yes, I did. Oh, nice. Uh, I lost a couple of ships and they're on their way back to uh, get repaired. Oh. Academy. Jenna, just so you know, your science ships look really cool. Do they? I haven't been looking at them. They're, yeah, they're like red and blue. They're red with blue splashy lights around them. Sweet. This was something, Ben, watching you, how you play. I, I never zoom in closer than here, mostly because oh, I just I like, always, I like the like, overview. It, I didn't I realize how beautiful it was. Yeah, like you see clouds over desert worlds moving. Oh. Like, yeah. Something they've done absolutely beautifully in this game. Yeah. In battles, I especially zoom in on battles. Um, like the, Chris, the shardlings that I was, the crystal shardlings um, were gorgeous. And, you know, I didn't want to wreck them. But every time I got anywhere close to them, they would decimate my, my populations. Uh, and so I stayed away from their worlds for a really long time. But then, I don't know, they just started invading my worlds. And I was a little like... This was my equivalent to the Shardlings. This is... The Void Cloud. Very, yeah, the Void Cloud, <laughs> the vastly superior alien species that is hostile towards me and destroys me every single time I enter the system. <laughs> so I just leave them alone their system yeah, they can have it the world did, is big did either of you ever listen to welcome to night vale, i think was the podcast yeah, yeah and there's like the dog part is not for dogs yeah <laughs> the void cloud has a has a night vale feel to oh, it oh yeah very much so yeah <laughs> um yeah i was gonna manage my fleet and and physics research is available ftl inhibition Ooh. Oh, it, oh no, that's sorry. I want, there's moat harvesting traps. And so you can, let's go with moats. Moats? Oh, like around a star? Um, there are moat harvesting traps so that you can explore, exploit the resource volatile moats. Oh, moats like M-O-T-E-S, not M-O-A-T-S. No, M-O-T-E-S. Moat. And now oh, you good. I've seen those. The planet. Um where we might be able to stabilize it. Ooh, so yay. a little while for the research team to get there, but it's happening. Thank you for moving my species forward in a way that I never would. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job. I don't know. I don't know what the... Ben's making His Mac 4 can now be reclassified as arid rather than barren. Hooray! The grand experiment has greatly enriched the Glibzigian sciences. Ooh. Marvelous. I would Marvelous. love to live on Enceladus. I think that'd be so cool. If it wasn't so cold all the time. To live on an arid planet? No, I was sorry. I was thinking about actual real life moons that we could live on. Um, and I was thinking Enceladus because it has the geysers on it. Um, mm-hmm. That's the one around Saturn. It's, it's an ice moon. Um, and it has an ocean underneath. It just looks so cool. Cool. Alindria, what kind of planet would you live on? Uh, an Earth that might be just like <laughs> oh, warmer. boring. Yeah. I want a Earth. warmer Earth. <laughs> a warmer <laughs> Earth. I want to live in an Earth that has the weather of like 27 degrees all the time. No cold. For no those cold. that just... don't know. Alendria is from Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is. And so that side, we, I like the warm. Um, and we're going to end up in a free Hyphian coalition, just so you know. Okay. We'll be able to move freely. Between- I thought we're still talking about Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to keep track of what's real and what's not. <laughs> <laughs> Those stars are really close together. That's cool. Mm. Uh, 
So Ben and Alendria, I believe, read these things. And James, I, I am too overwhelmed. So I just go, oh, is it routine? Great, research it. I don't know. Only one option, <laughs> except. Yeah. <laughs> So I only, I pretty much only read things based on colors. And so I'll be like, okay, it says routine in yellow. Great. We're doing routine. Oh. I needed the courier network to reduce my expansion sprawl. Ooh. Oh, hey, nice. Yeah. You're back under control. Oh, I'm still losing still on food. food. Yeah. It's okay. You have nine, almost 10,000 foods. It'll take a while to starve. Yeah. <laughs> and the other cool thing too if you want to get into economics is that there's a market and you can sell uh, resources that you have extra of to buy more resources. Um, so Ben, you have so much energy that you could probably just buy food if that, yeah. if you wanted to. I have food. a ton of food right now too, so. You do, so you don't need to buy food. And you can also sell things, right? Or yeah. do we not have a market yet? No, you I have a market, stuff. yeah. Oh, we do have a market. Oh, we don't have an intergalactic market. The galactic market has not been founded yet. So we only have access mm. to the internal market. How? So if you go to the left F or press F3. I see. This is probably that galaxy expansion. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So on the galactic market, you can, so for instance, like you've got 4,000 alloys. You can sell alloys and make energy credits or in the case of my military expansion amongst my incredibly peaceful jellyfish um you could buy alloys and sell i think i had like a ton of I, like i said i had a ton of energy credits because i had managed to get a lot of those and so i was just getting uber i could buy all of the things i needed on the galactic market so fancy mm -hmm. That's very Ferengi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the commerce oriented, long life jellyfish. Establish the rules of acquisition. Yeah. That was nice. How many rules of acquisition were there? Hundreds. <laughs> um. He's still scanning, but it says he's not doing anything. Huh. Well, maybe I have the wrong shit. There we go. This guy, yeah. Go explore this section. You're right at the edge of the galaxy there. Mm hmm. Which is good, because that means I don't have to worry. Like, I'm actually surprised that there's no. So far, I found the galaxy very crowded everywhere I've mm -hmm. explored, but. It seems like this entire area appears empty. Thank you for joining us, James. James says that uh, it looks like a fun game and that he'll check it, check it out for sure. And thank you for joining us while we show you games. We are not sponsored. Um, <laughs> we're just playing these for fun. And, and one of the reasons that we're playing them is um, be just to kind of like see how well they do at getting people engaged in space stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we all kind of have different perspectives on that, Ben being an actual professional space person. And, and What's on my business card? <laughs> professional <laughs> space person. Actual person. professional space person. <laughs> um, and Alendra and I being um, communicating space people um, with, with Alendra doing magazine things and me doing outreach things um, just to sort of see how how it all kind of ties together. Um, and that's the, the approach that we're taking over the next few um, weeks as well as we look at the different games. Um, yeah, I guess as we get to eight o'clock, we can talk like, what are the next games? Yeah. What are we playing? Next, we're playing Out of Space next, right? I do believe so. And then Among Us the week after. No, no, we're doing Elite Dangerous the week after because I needed- Elite, you're yeah. correct. Elite Dangerous the week after and then Among Us. So Out of Which Space- Yeah. Out of Space is like a really super chill. Um, very different game. <laughs> very different game where we are three roommates in a, a space station and we have to keep the aliens out um, in order to continue living. Yeah. Um, and you win the game when you get rid of all the aliens. I don't know if it's super chill. I get stressed out of that game too for different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> it's, 
it feels lower consequence because the only thing that happens if uh, if you fail is you die. Whereas here you could like, I don't know, destroy relationships with people and <laughs> that are unfixable. Like if you die, you can just regenerate and it's fine. <laughs> And it's not even, it's not even dying. You just end up in a cocoon and you're that's rolling true. around on the floor. Yeah, it's true. And you have to order pizza to feed your roommates. Yeah. And you're <laughs> with each other. Yeah. It's really nice. So we're going to play that next. Um, you'll see us more stressed probably then and less like, look at how fun this game is. We'll <laughs> be a lot of like running around, quick, clean that thing. So we're going to try that next week. Yeah, I mean, the thing about that game is that it's like, it makes you kind of question your own self you're like i haven't eaten and like i've almost like gotten to the point where i'm going to be rolling around on the ground starving and then my friends will have to feed me pizza it's like you kind of think to yourself how many times have i gone to those like meetings and ignored the the things that i should have been doing to survive as a person in order to you know in theory do something better but i may have been making the situation worse (laughs) It's, and it shows you the value of your friends too, because sometimes your friends notice and you don't. Exactly. Um, it's that value of like Ben saying, Jenny, you need to have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Which is part of the game, Which but also in real game. life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also real life. Um, so that's next. And then after that, we're going to be playing Elite Dangerous, which is on the complicated level of Stellaris. Um, we each have our own spaceship and we go around doing whatever we want. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, in two weeks and then we're going to wrap it up with everyone's favorite and by everyone I mean everyone under the age of like 22 Um, (laughs) and that's that's um among us so we're going to wrap it up with among us which is also fun and silly and now among us makes you feel like everybody's a traitor it's true you don't trust any of your friends anymore and you find out things you never thought you would know about your friends Alondria (laughs) (laughs) Alondra is a good liar. Yeah, that's I'm what I learned. I'm a good liar. I'm just a terrible liar. So I like, but when I'm lying. Like you're lying all the time. It's like, you're like, are you the imposter, Alondra? And I'm like. <laughs> 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 but she responds to that with every single question. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really awkward all the time. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think that takes us to four minutes past our time, um, which is not the end of the world because we are playing video games. This is not, we don't, I don't know if we need to stay strictly to time. Um, but we had a really good time tonight with all y'all and um, thanks for joining. We'll see you next week for our, our, space, our space station nightmare, keeping the aliens away. <laughs> It'll right. be great. It'll well, be thanks, great. Jenna, for being our voice tonight and watching us play. And thank you. Uh, thanks, I am the ben, second child. for joining. Oh, thank you for having me. This is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you both next week. Okay. And we'll see all y'all who join next week, too. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.